All right, hey, what's going on everyone? Coach Kyle here with Kenny Tri Training. In today's video, I wanted to go over does cardio affect muscle growth? So, you know, kind of, I've, I've been asked this question a handful of times over the years and I've dealt with it myself, um, training for endurance events like Ironmans and then also trying to uh, one rep max like 315 on, on flat bench or anything like that. So I've been asked that question, uh, you know, numerous times and I wanted to go over kind of my thoughts, my opinions on whether or not uh, cardiovascular is going to diminish or inhibit any sort of protein synthesis or muscular hypertrophy that we work so hard in the gym to try to grow our muscles and, you know, make those those gains and that significant progress and stuff like that. So to, to start off, I guess we have two different systems that we like to train, right? So we have our cardiovascular system that we like to train, like our lungs and our heart. And then we have our musculoskeletal system that we like to train by doing like, like chest press or lat pull down or something like that. So the idea when we do chest press or lat pull down is to contract those muscles um, and then target blood flow through the contraction, make slight tears and then have the muscles grow back a little bit stronger and then have that, you know, snowball effect in order to get those target muscles uh, stronger and bigger, right? Essentially. And then we have our cardiovascular system, which we like to train through, you know, trying to run a 5k or trying to run a half marathon or whatever, where we're looking more so at our, our heart rate. Um, if we're a little bit more advanced in running, uh, we're th looking at things like our cadence or our VO2 max. And we want to kind of gauge whether or not doing those forms of cardio is going to affect, you know, doing that chest press or that lap pull down. So there's been controversy that I've read uh, and studied on over the years, uh, whether or not it is true that cardio kills your gains or your progress or stuff like that. The short answer is going to be no, right? So cardio does not inhibit any sort of muscle growth. So based on the studies that I've read uh, and researched and looked at and have dealt with myself, <coughs> cardiovascular training is not going to interfere or inhibit any sort of muscle growth, right? So there's been uh, some of these studies to give you some examples we look at like a, a molecular pathways through muscular hypertrophy and whether or not uh, there's diminished there's diminished returns uh, from resistance training uh, or trying to you know develop that muscular hypertrophy. So uh, again, there has not been any significant studies that I've come, come across that have found that cardiovascular training um, is going to affect muscular anatomy and you know again diminish that that growth there. So now where where's the line i guess so where do we find um at which at what point does cardio start to uh, affect any sort of muscle gains so now there's been a couple of examples um that i've uh, researched and then you know kind of applied with myself as well as you know numerous clients over the years now when we do forms of cardio and our heart rate is prolonged above zone three zone four for an extended period of time and we're talking up to like 90 minutes at which point our body is going to begin to, uh, you know, break down and then use some of that protein, use some of that muscle um, as our primary source of energy, right? So once we get into those protein and those muscle fuel sources, then we're going to start to diminish them slightly. It's not going to be significant by any means. Majority of individuals are uh, just trying to be healthy, be fit. Some, some of you guys are trying to do, you know, bodybuilding shows. Some of you guys are trying to do your first marathon or whatever it is. Uh, you know, this information can be vital in order to progress, especially breakthrough plateaus. So again, the short answer, whether or not cardiovascular affects or inhibits a muscle growth is going to be no. So where we're looking at um, that, that affection, right? Where we're looking at the, the facts, where our, our muscles begin to break down and be used as primary fuel sources is going to be that prolonged high intensity cardio. So if we're running out of zone three, zone four, zone five for let's say five plus to 10 miles and our, our glycogen systems are depleted, our primary fuel source, our excess carbohydrates are diminished, then we start tapping into our muscle reserves to continue making us and helping us run that like 10 to 15 miles. So what you want to do, right? is we need to essentially prioritize the, the, the workouts themselves. So if we're, if we're trying to come in or our overall goal is to basically reduce body weight or reduce body fat, we need to, again, prioritize, prioritize cardio, right? If we're trying to you know bulk up or put a little bit more muscle mass on our bodies to increase our metabolism, to get stronger, whatever the goal may be, then we need to prioritize strength training. 
Now, what trails along those different uh, types of workouts is going to be our nutrition. So if we're trying to lift heavy, get stronger, try to keep the rep counts, you know, moving, things like that inside of, uh, of a gym or doing like bodyweight calisthenics, then again, as you know, the primary uh, macronutrient you need to consume is going to be protein. So our muscles can, uh, you know, develop protein synthesis, utilize that main, that protein molecule, and then continue to grow our muscles, right? And then if we're trying to, you know, run a 5K, we're trying to reduce body fat, then we need to prioritize cardio. Now, cardiovascular is, <laughs> there's basically, I recommend two different types, steady state and then high intensity interval training. So steady state is where we're going to be heart rate zone two, zone three for anywhere from like 30 to 40 minutes. And then high intensity cardio, we're going to look more like up and then down and then up and then down on a heart rate monitor where we're basically trying to go from zone two to zone four for like a two minute window and then like a two minute window or whatever the, the interval ratio of the day is going to be. High intensity cardio is scientifically proven to be the most beneficial form of fat loss, right? Generally with high intensity cardio, we don't want to hit zone four, zone five for an extended duration of time. Um, just, uh, and we generally don't want to do more than like three to four high intensity sessions per week. When our heart starts to hit zone four, zone five, we uh, basically are generating lactic acid and metabolic waste in, inside of our bodies. Um, and then we, like I mentioned prior, is we're breaking down the muscles pretty rapidly. So beneficial, but up to a certain point. So if we're trying to, uh, you know, progress and break through those plateaus on a cardiovascular side, we need to make sure we structure our, our cardio workout properly. <clears throat> now, so the biggest thing is prioritizing and then targeting the workouts and also having your specific goals that you want to accomplish. <clears throat> the problem where I see issues with individuals and, you know, uh, clients that I currently have is when I have uh, a, a relatively thin male who's, you know, in his early 30s and he's just, he's, he's skinny, right? And his goal is to try to put on muscle mass. My issue is when I see him trying to, uh, you know, test out his 5k time and his goal is to put on muscle mass. So, that's not taking some of this information and then, you know, applying it properly. He's going to remain skinny. The, the muscular hypertrophy and protein synthesis is not going to be uh, as uh, progressive at trying or doing as much cardio as they are doing. Um, and then also trying to, you know, strength train. Um, and then also too, I see this issue a lot with uh, a lot of other different trainers is when we have a relatively heavy set individual or someone who's a little bit overweight, right? And all they're doing is taking them through, uh, you know, simple reps on machines in the gym and not utilizing cardio to the advantage. Personally, I like to sway more on the cardiovascular side. I love, I love to sweat when I work out or my clients love to train hard or I like to train my clients hard and difficult. I like to monitor their heart rate. So back to this example, let's say you're a new client or you're a little bit heady set and you're trying to, you're trying to lose body fat, right? Um, or you're a fit individual trying to lose body fat. You have to utilize cardio uh, properly, right? So you have to take advantage of the high intensity interval sessions. Uh, and then we have to, uh, you know, also try to increase our, our aerobic capacity. So being able to run five miles at a lower heart rate. Uh, and then, yeah, so those are kind of the two main things is uh, making sure we're targeting the workouts properly. When we're looking at a cardiovascular, um, you know, uh, specific workout, we need to really utilize carbohydrates as our primary fuel source, right? So again, carbohydrates are going to be stored in our liver. Um, excess carbohydrates are going to get stored as glycogen. And those are our primary fuel sources when we train. Once we burn through those glycogen stores, um, that storage, uh, we start to break down uh, that protein development and you know we start to utilize some of our muscles as energy majority of individuals do not get to that point um, of like a, a muscle breakdown for energy within a, a given workout at that point we're talking a little bit more kind of uh, long endurance long-term endurance athletes uh, are you know that's why you look at like a professional marathon runner they're very thin individuals right so again most individuals need to basically uh, a healthy balance right so making sure we're uh, mixing up um, proper uh, strength training sessions, and then also making sure we're not neglecting cardio. So again, majority of individuals, if we need to reduce that body fat, 
tack on 20 to 30 minutes of steady state or hit cardio post resistance training, right? Um, it's prioritize workouts, make sure you're fueling the, the workouts appropriately. Um, and then, you know, uh, progressing and breaking through plateaus, utilize data, um, things like tracking your reps, tracking the weights. Um, and then especially with a lot of my clients will track heart rate thoroughly. What is your resting heart rate? If I told you to get on a treadmill right now and run five miles, what would your average heart rate be? The goal would be one month from now to have your average heart rate be a little bit lower than where it's currently at because your heart, again, is a muscle and it acts as a pump. So again, um, I just wanted to take you through it, all right? And then make sure you space out your workouts, all right? So instead of doing, uh, you know, just cardio, 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 work kind of a cardio day and then work more of a strength training day. Where we start to get the, the biggest effect from cardiovascular exercise and muscle growth is going to be if we're doing fasted cardio. That is one of my favorite ways to train is doing high intensity intervals on an empty stomach. So, or like when I wake up in the morning and I don't have, you know, a busy work day uh, and then I can kind of uh, basically skip breakfast and then I'll do from like, I don't know, whatever time it is, I'll work intervals or I'll do a long steady state uh, run. So that is where um, steady state aerobic exercise uh, where the there's low availability of glycogen in our bodies because we're in that fasted state uh, and then our bodies essentially start to break down protein um, from our muscles into amino acids and then it's converted into glucose which is going to provide the energy so my energy requirement in a fasted state is going to play a bigger uh, diminishment on my muscles uh, in order to continue progressing um, or making me go within whatever workout I'm doing so that's the biggest form so I will use this knowledge to my advantage in order to try to continue and reduce my body fat so fasted cardio can be extremely beneficial, but it needs to be done appropriately. Um, and I won't, it's not like something I do every single day. I'll only do it if the goal is to uh, continue to drop my body fat for whatever reason, right? So again, does cardio affect muscle growth? Short answer is no, but I hope you take some of this information and then apply it and then break through any plateau that you may experience. Majority individuals will go through a couple plateaus in their lifetime and it's kind of just like a, you know, a, a circling effect. So utilize it, uh, maximize cardio's benefits, um, you know, continue to strength train, uh, balance your workouts, uh, make sure you look at like the structure of your workouts throughout your weeks and then, uh, you know, uh, utilize data to progress physically and then other than that, that's that's pretty much it. So again, I hope some of this information helps. You could always reach out to me with any questions or if you want to work together. So other than that, keep training hard, keep getting after it. And then, yeah, talk to you later.